filament, filament, and more filament. But wouldn't it be great if you could directly 3D print with your 3D printing waste, or even better, the material all filaments are made out of? Plastic pellets, since they are much cheaper than filament. Over the last two years, I developed a DIY extruder that can print directly with all sorts of materials in granules or pellet form instead of filament. This means we not only can 3D print PLA, ABS and so on cheaper, but also with sugar, chocolate or basically anything as long as it is in granules form and can melt. But how does the pellet printing experience and the print results differ from filament printing? Can you just upgrade your old 3D printer to a pellet printer? And most importantly, can you shred your failed prints in a blender to 3D print with them again? All these questions will get answered so that in the end you can decide whether pellet 3D printing is something for you or not. Let's get started. So is pellet 3D printing any different than filament 3D printing? To answer that question, let's take a look at my pellet printing setup. I use my old filament 3D printer, the Creality NF3V2, and upgraded it to a pellet 3D printer by unplugging the stock filament print head and plugging in my DIY pellet print head. Besides that we have the different extruder, the rest stays the same. If you want to print now, for instance, this vase, then you can just use any slicer of your choice to adjust the print settings and load it into the 3D printer. But in the end, it's still the same printer, the same first layer, and the same PLA or whatever you are usually printing with, just at a much lower cost. And also the benefit of being able to 3D print with granulated material, which might be a solution to reuse the plastic waste that all our 3D printers produce. In fact, I even tried to shred some of my failed 3D prints with a blender and the printing results were actually quite shocking. However, before I show them to you, we need to answer some of the most frequent questions about pellet extruders, like how does retraction work, when there's nothing to retract, what's the max flow rate and speed and so on. Let's talk about retraction, because many people say that it is impossible to achieve with a pellet extruder. Is this true? Well, in a filament extruder, the retraction is achieved by pulling filament backwards. But how do you achieve retraction when there is no filament to pull back? Without going too much into the physics details, I figured out that if you design the extruder screw and the extruder barrel in the right way, which I did with my extruder, then you can achieve retraction by turning the extruder screw backwards and it then basically sucks the molten plastic back into the nozzle and with that creates a time window that allows travel movements without oozing. And despite using in this print here a 1mm nozzle, there still is no oozing while traveling. But there is one problem. I designed the extruder in a way so that it can use all standard 3D printer nozzles, which makes it extremely universal, but this also brings a problem with it. Standard 3D printer nozzles are made for filament 3D printing and have this melt zone where filament is inserted and melted. But in the pellet extruder, this melt zone has no use at all and acts just like a reservoir full of molten plastic trying to ooze out all the time and making the control of retraction and flow rate more difficult. My pellet extruder works despite these challenges quite well but it still prevents it to reach its full potential. Like I explained in my last video, pellet extruder for any 3D printer, you can use this extruder on basically any 3D printer. But if I would use custom non-standard nozzles, this would make it significantly less universal so I'm not sure which trade-off would be better. And would be very thankful if you could share your opinion about this in my short pellet extruder survey that you find in the description, so that I can improve the extruder according to your desires and make it available. But what flow rates can you achieve with such an extruder? Since you have a bigger melt zone, do you also have a higher flow rate? Well, with pellet extruders, it's not just that straightforward, like in a filament extruder, where you push a piece of plastic string through a heated nozzle. But why don't we make a test to find out if we can achieve the same flow rate as the popular Revo High Flow Hot End. For this we are going to use my $200 3D printer, the end of 3 v 2 and print this storage container with a 1mm nozzle. In the slicer settings I have set up everything in a way so that we have mostly a constant flow rate of 33 cubic millimeters per second, which represents the maximum flow rate of the popular Revo High Flow Hot End with a 1mm nozzle or PLA. But are we going to be able to print at this flow rate? Let's find out. As a layer height I have chosen 0.3mm and as our layer width 1.3mm. The speed stays mostly the same and is around 90mm per second. While my Ender 3 is not a high performance 3D printer, this speed is still easily achievable. And after 2 hours and 5 minutes, a new storage container is born with a weight of 240 grams which means we have processed around 120 grams of PLA per hour on an Ender 3. 
please let me know in my short survey if such a flow rate would be enough for you or not. Before we try to 3D print with failed 3D prints, let's take a quick look at speed. Since you often ask me, what's the maximum speed? And begin with the most important criteria for it, weight. In its current version, which is still undergoing improvements and changes, this extruder has a weight around 660 grams. While this sounds heavy for a 3D printer printhead, these 660 grams make it, as far as I know, the lightest pellet extruder printhead in the world. So it's actually very lightweight for a pellet extruder. The other aspect that determines the maximum print speed is the printer itself. Since I don't have a fast Core XY printer at the moment, we are going to use my Ender 3 V2 as a reference, which is by the way, not a high performance printer. On such a printer, print speeds from 90 to 150 mm per second with an acceleration between 400 to 1000 are easily achievable. Of course, you can always go higher, but this might also affect the print quality. As a reference, this big bench you saw earlier was printed with a 1mm nozzle at a print speed of 50mm per second. This bracket with a 0.6mm nozzle at a print speed of 100mm per second. And the same counts for this smaller benchy printed with 0.4mm nozzle. The thing however is, if you have a 3D printer that is capable of reaching higher print speeds, for example a CoXY printer, then sure, you can print even faster. I'd be interested to know what printer you have, so don't forget to add that to my survey I talked about earlier. So let's try to 3D print with some failed 3D prints. For this, I shredded my old PLA prints in a blender and sorted them using some 3D printed sieves, which resulted in this sample of shredded PLA granules. It's important to note that the irregular size and shape of these granules might lead to very inconsistent extrusion. But since the goal here is to just produce a good enough print quality, I'll be happy with that, since for most practical 3D prints, we don't necessarily need the most perfect print quality. So let's see if we can get some extrusion. Loaded into the hopper and trying to purge some material, at first nothing happened. So I thought, oh no. But then, suddenly plastic started to come out and I tried to start a 3D print. At the beginning, the skirt layers were a bit under extruded. So I adjusted the flow rate in the middle of the print to get the right amount of extrusion. The first layer turned out surprisingly well but I was sitting there every second hoping nothing goes wrong. After a few minutes, a real 3D print started to appear and some more minutes later, we actually 3D printed with shredded PLA, a test book that will allow us to test how much the material properties of our PLA change through remelting it. Because I want to find out how many times we can recycle our failed prints. This test hook, by the way, is made by CNC Kitchen, so a big thanks to him for making these. Some might say, this is a bad print quality, but you forget the most important point. The main goal here is not to produce a perfect print quality, but to reduce the cost of 3D printing as much as possible while maintaining a good enough print quality so that you don't have to buy expensive filament anymore. Here's an example. For the same price, would you rather have five of such storage boxes to organize your things or only one, which is a bit more pretty? Whatever you want, it doesn't matter anyways, because you, my friend, at the moment have only one option and this is filament. But don't worry, if you run out of it, you can always buy a new filament spool, because this is what they want. And how dare you try to recycle your plastic waste, or even worse, to 3D print with pellets. This is not what brings the most profits, and if this makes you angry and you want to change this, then please help me achieving that by filling out my short pellet extruder survey, which you'll find in the description below. And as a thank you, you will receive a very nice reward. What this reward will be is a secret for now. Just keep in mind that this opportunity will end soon. But how can you achieve colors for your pellet 3D prints? Normally, this is done by adding so-called master batches, which are basically plastic pellets with a high concentration of color pigments in them. Inside the extruder, they melt and mix with the rest of the uncolored plastic to end up with a 3D print that is colored. But there are also other methods which I use to color my 3D prints and these allow you to 3D print in any color you like but also to create custom gradient colored 3D prints. So let's start with the first method which is the most straightforward one. After your parts are 3D printed, you can just spray paint them in any color you like to have for example a matte black finish on your 3D printed parts like on my mini shelf right here. Method 2. 
You can also directly spray paint your palettes or granules which will give your prints an even color throughout the whole print because the color is now in the plastic and not just on the surface. Here is an example. I just 3D printed with my palette extruder these containers for mixing colors. In this one I've put 300 grams of PLA pellets. Now I spray paint on them, close the lid and shake everything. And as you can see all the paint is mixed very evenly with all pellets and once you let that dry out you made 300 grams of blue PLA pellets in less than a minute. Depending on the amount of color you add you can control the color intensity of your final 3D printed parts. And if you do that with transparent plastic palettes, then you can end up with a cool looking half transparent, half colored 3D print. Method 3. Instead of spray painting them, you can also just mix them with color powders. That you can buy for example directly on Amazon in sets that contain 40 different colors for less than $15. The disadvantage of this is that the extruder gets quite dirty because the powder spills everywhere. But you can solve this issue with method number 4. By spray painting the pellets first with transparent spray paint and then adding powder colors to it, plus mixing all of this, will embed the color powder in the dry transparent spray paint without causing a dirty mess in the extruder later on. This is the most universal budget method to print in any color you want. And if you want to create gradient color effects, then you can just stack different amounts of colored pellets on top of each other within the extruder, which will result in gradient colored. The, prints. the thing is, if you absolutely need the best print quality and you are willing to pay a higher price for that, then filament is clearly the better choice for you. But if you go away from this best print quality mindset and still would be satisfied with the print quality you saw during the video, then with pellet 3D printing there is a new world for you to discover, which not only makes recycling of your 3D prints and even household plastic much easier, but it also gives you access to the full freedom that 3D printing can provide. Which could for example mean chopping chocolate into smaller pieces and 3D printing with them to recreate your favorite chocolate sweets with cream fillings and nuts and so on. Or 3D print aesthetic or low strength parts in sugar and spray paint them afterwards to create ridiculously cheap 3D prints. This however is just a fraction of what you can do or experience with since the limitations of this are still unknown. And the only question here is do you want to be part of this maybe new revolution in 3D printing and contribute to its further development. If yes, then I recommend you to watch the video in which I explain in more detail how the extruder works, but first make sure you took this survey and secured yourself the reward. That's it for today and until next time.